Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to AFL Evolution 2 Coach Career. So today's video, we are taking on the Gold Coast Suns. Um, if you watched our last video, we couldn't get the job done against the Tigers. It's been a tough few weeks um, if you are a Bombers fan, if you're a Bombers supporter in this series. Our backs are against the wall. We have a few injuries. Um, we also learned that we lose Jake Stringer uh, for the season, so that hurts the Bombers. Um, we also lost Orazio for around 12 to 11 weeks. So let's get into team selection. So in this week for his first game of the year, Sam Draper comes in just to give Tommy Bell Chambers a little bit of help um, against the young Gold Coast Suns, uh, Ruckman. Mack Welfie returns. Injured, Andy McGrath is out for two weeks. Um, he's out with a calf strain, which is pretty disappointing. He's been in really, really good form this year, Andy McGrath. And Will Snelling, who struggled in his game, in his first game of the season against the Tigers. Will Snelling is omitted. Sam Draper, it's exciting to see him in the side as we look at the lineup that we're taking on the Gold Coast Suns. Connor McKenna, Michael Hurley, Marty Gleason, Adam Saad, Kale Hooker, Mason Redmond, Kyle Langford on the wing, Dyson Heppel will move into the midfield, um, into the middle on ball as Andy McGrath is out. Darcy Parrish on the other wing, Tommy Cutler, Sean McKernan, Jaden Laverde, Anthony McDonald, Tip and Woody, Joey Danaher, need a massive game out of Joe, Jacob Townsend, Tommy Bell Chambers, Zach Merritt, Dylan Scheel, and on the interchange, Sam Draper in for his first game, like I said, Irving Mosquito, David Zaharakis, and Mac Welfi returns to the lineup. He's been out for a few weeks, Mac Welfi. Um, I thought that he didn't really do too much wrong in his games that he's played. It is good to have Mac Welfi back in the team. So, if you haven't seen the previous videos, we've had a few injuries, um, like I said, like I talked about earlier. Very disappointing. We are trying to push through it. We had a very disappointing Dreamtime match against the Tigers. It is now, it's basically time to right some wrongs. Gold Coast is definitely a danger danger game. Um, I do think that every time, every time we play like a poor team, we end up struggling. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let's get into the clash between the Suns. Thanks for joining us as we welcome you today for Sunday afternoon football. Anthony Hudson here. Many relief faces in the crowd. Thankful the roof is closed for this match. It's horrible outside. Collaborating with me in the commentary booth is Gary Lyon. Welcome, Gaz. Hi, Hutto. Always a pleasure. They run on in full confidence there, looking sharp. And the crowd are appreciating it. The cheer squad's hard work is paying off. The banners are looking great. It's a big midfield battle today. Whichever team can get on top in the middle of the ground will walk out winners today. The captains of both sides make their way to the middle for the coin toss. Both sides look ready to get into the action. Just moments away now. So here we go. The Bombers and the Suns at Marvel. We're underway. Uh, this game started out, like I said, it was definitely going to be a danger game for us. And this Gold Coast team came to play. They were putting the pressure on early. We haven't even gone three minutes yet. And the Gold Coast Suns had two goals. Um, this is the first team that really got on top of us early. I just have an answer for him. Like, I couldn't stop the, the midfield. The midfield were all, just all, all on top of us um, early in this first term. You see here, they have the first three goals of the game. The Gold Coast Suns, 18-0. to zero. They were away here. Um, it was different um, contrast to when we played North Melbourne. We hit the first, I think, 11 goals. The Suns are four goals up early in this term. So they were applying the pressure. Um, they had all the inside 50s. You see here a couple of good tackles from um, our players. But go forward, one out. Adam Saad gets beaten by Ben Ainsworth, who has a chance to kick goal number five for the Suns. I was a bit shell-shocked here. I was a bit worried considering how poorly we performed um, against the Tigers. We 
The problem is we do have players coming back. This injury bug has got us, but players will be coming back. As you see, Jacob Townsend runs into an open goal and kicks it. That basically got us going. He's got this game rolling. Um, David Zaharakis was really good in this game. He was a massive chance um, to feature in the best for us. I thought he was really, really good. Um, you see him line up here, kick the Bombers second, brings us right back into this game. Um, I don't really know if this Gold Coast team will feature in the finals, but my God, they gave us a good run for our money early on. You see here, Tommy Cutler runs in, kicks a goal for the Bombers, and we are back within 13 points. I knew if we just weathered the storm and basically just just wait, not, not panic too much, I knew we could get back in this game. So 15 points, the Bombers trail. The Gold Coast Suns at quarter time, they definitely have come to play. They've definitely come to show that they are not going to be pushed around. 3 2 20 to 5 5 35. Connor McKenna, our best at the moment with six disposals. Zach are really good as well. And Zach Merritt with three. But they are well, they were well on top in that first term. We moved to the second quarter here, and they were definitely not letting up. But you see Joey Danaher take a strong mark up forward. He goes back, and he has a chance to kick. Goal number one for Joe Danaher to get us rolling. So this was the quarter where I kind of thought would run over the top of him. I kind of thought that we would probably be a chance to basically put the foot uh, foot down. But this Gold Coast team, like I said, definitely came to play. They have a 16-point lead here. As you see, Zara Arcus gets tackled. Joey Danaher roving the pack beautifully, picking up the ball, picking up the crumbs. He kicks goal number two. He kept us in this game. He really kick-started this this, basically, this comeback, you can see him charging out of the goals here, gets it here off the tackle, runs in, left foot, it goes through the middle as we move through here. We make a little bit of a comeback, Joey again kicks another goal, he's got three goals in this turn, like I said, keeping us around, keeping us close to this, this Gold Coast team who, who did come to play and did come to, uh, to really put the pressure on us. Tip and Woody has a chance to give us the lead here late in this second term, Irving gives away the free, so in this second quarter here, we had chances to get in front. We just couldn't capitalize. You see uh, David Zyrakis, a horrible miss. He was really good in this game, though. I really liked this game. Goes forward again, and this was probably goal of the night. He's had a few goal of the night so far, uh, Irving Mosquito. You see him run around here. You're not catching him on the right foot. Kicks an absolute beauty, and the Bombers have the lead. We take the lead, I think, for the first time tonight. 45-43, to 43, but this Gold Coast team... They were not letting up. Nice nice goal here. It gives them the lead again by four points as we're closing in on halftime. Zaka here again. We have a few... I swear Zyrakis kicked four points in this game. I swear he was he was attacking the... the he was really good. Like, he did... He, he was omitted for the Anzac Day clash, but he came back for that. Um, he came back after that, and he's been pretty good. So, at halftime, the Bombers 7-5-47. Trail the Sun 7-7-49. I wasn't panicking, but like I said... We had to just steady the ship. We had to get into this game because this Gold Coast, this Gold Coast team definitely um, when we're going to bring it at, at all costs. Heppel gets pushed in the back here and he has a chance to kick a captain's goal. You see seven minutes have gone in this third term. We trial by three points. Dyson Heppel, not a massive goal kicker. He kicks a really important goal for the Bombers to give us the lead. We lead by three points here, but we just could not extend our lead. Every single time we tried to extend our lead, Gold Coast just had an answer. You see here, running into goal. I'm pretty sure this might have been Peter Wright. He runs in. He kicks a goal. The Gold Coast have the lead again, and I kind of was panicking. Joey Danaher, one of our best for this game and best probably for our whole season, if we're going to be honest, has a chance here to kick a goal and give us back the lead. It is a massive kick from 50. It just hits the post. At the last moment, I was pretty disappointed, but uh, Connor McKenna. Now, I did say Dyson Hebble didn't really kick goals. Connor McKenna has a chance here to kick the goal and give the Bombers the lead again by five points. He was really good for us. He was probably our best player. Through maybe two and a half quarters, Connor, he was really, really good for us. He kicks the goal, gives us the lead, and is goal for goal here at Marvel Stadium. The Suns lead by two point at this stage. Tommy Cutler. You could not call it an impossible kick, but it is a very, very tough kick. Have a look at this. It just fades right at the very last minute. But we're running through the middle here. Darcy Parrish, great, great, great kick to Mac Welfie, who took a really nice mark. I thought I was going to get uh, spoiled then. But Joey Danaher on the lead. Not too sure how he got that. He got it. He kicks the goal. The Bombers have the lead. It is goal for goal at Marvel. And... It, I mean, Hugh Greenwood, if you just look at some of his stats, I think he had like six, 15 tackles to this point. He was keeping this Gold Coast, this, this Gold Coast team um, well in this game. And they do lead us by five points at three-quarter at three quarter time. I mean, it's going to be a massive last quarter for us. I knew it was going to be a massive last quarter for us. 
Um, I didn't think it was going to go like this this game. I thought it was going to be not easier, but I thought it would come out and the game would probably be over by three-quarter time. But we do trail by five points to the Suns at three-quarter time. We need a massive last quarter here to run over the top of them. Every single time we, we got in front, they had an answer. They had something to come back. So let's get into this final term, the Bombers and the Suns. What a game this is. Tipper gets tackled high, and he has a chance to give the Bombers the lead again. This, I mean, I think Tipper is just the master of the last quarter. He struggled in this game, Tipper, but have a look at this kick. He's 50 meters out and almost on the boundary line. Kicks an absolute beauty. Anthony McDonald, Tipper, what he gives the Bombers the lead here in the last term. So... We had basically all the play for six minutes, and the Gold Coast just get one clearance kick, and they just, they got players out. I have no idea where all our players were. We're all pushed up in our zone, and they have the lead again through Hugh Greenwood. was awesome in this game. He was just tremendous. Great little pass here from Joey to Irving, who kicks a goal, just squeezes at home. I was surprised that went through, but the Gold Coast answered again. It is goal for goal here at Marvel. Things are getting tight, 84 to 80. Uh, we go forward here through Tommy Cutler, who was really good, like I said. He's running here. Um, nice little chip over. Joey Dano has front spot. Probably our best player through the entire night here. Has the chance to give us the lead. 16 minutes gone here in the last. He kicks the goal, and the Bombers are back in front. But the story is not over. It's not written. The book is not closed for the Suns. As you guys will see, they have a free kick here right in front of goal. 23 minutes have gone. I knew this wasn't going to be a long quarter. They have the lead with, it had to be around three or four minutes left in this game. So in this last term, uh, McDonald Tipper Moody gives it over to Zach Merritt and he's running into an open goal. I have no idea how he missed this, but we were peppering. We were not giving up this hope and we had to go to the man, the man who makes, I swear he turns everything into gold. McDonald Tipper Moody kicks a final quarter goal, 29 minutes. It resembles the goal. Uh, that we can all remember. Surely we can all remember. The goalie kicked against North Melbourne on the boundary. Have a look at this. Tipper kicks an absolute beauty for the Bombers in the last quarter. He is the last quarter specialist. I know if we do need a goal, I know who we have to go to. It is Tipper. 30 minutes have gone in this last, and we go forward here. The last hoorah. Adam Saad comes out and meets it, and we hold on. Wow, what a game. We, we just hold on in the nick of time. I was so worried. I was like, we cannot fall. We can't fall. We can't lose these types of games. And with all our injuries at the moment, we need to win these games because against the tough teams, we are definitely going to struggle. But it's one of those one of those games where we finally win a close one. We we drew with uh, the Demons. We drew with the Giants. We lost to the Pies, but we finally get the job done. Zach Merritt was awesome in this game. Connor McKenna were really, really good. Joey Danaher, really good. Five goals for Joe. Probably in a best-on-ground performance. Zach Merritt, 15 disposals, but... We finally get it done. We finally get the win in a close one. Hugh Greenwood was unreal for the Suns. 15 disposals. David Swallow had 20. Peter Wright kicked four goals. But, wow, we escaped. It's over. We got the win. We can now settle. So let's look at J21 votes. Um, I had a few plays. David Zarakis was really, really good. Tipper for his last quarter performance kicked two massive, massive goals for the Dons. Um, I thought that also... Adam Saad was pretty good, but I just can't give him votes for um, some of the things that he, he did wrong where he got uh, pushed around and, and he got marks taken off him. But I've decided to give three votes to Joey. Joey was awesome in this game. Um, five goals, 12 disposals, kept us in it when, when Gold Coast got the jump on us. They were five goals up at one stage. So big, big win for the Dons. Um, for two votes, this player was just, he was everywhere the whole, the whole game. Let out disposal count, Zach Merritt. He's been really good. Um, he had to stand up with Andy McGrath out of the team. Um, our forward line standing up with Joey. Um, after our disappointing loss to the Tigers, I knew Zach Merritt would have to stand up and, and, and have a massive game, and he did. And one vote I've decided to give to Connor McKenna. Um, he was really, really good in this game also. I think he's getting a lot better. He's he's uh, he's improving. He's He started off a bit poor this season, but he's starting to, to really come into his own. He's a really good footballer. But there are our votes for the game against the Suns. Let's check out the leaderboard. Joey Danaher takes the lead. So Joe is in the lead. He leads Dylan Shield by one vote. Zach Merritt closely followed with Andy McGrath and Adam Saad. But, wow. I'm still, I was still in a bit of shock that we got that job done considering 29 minutes on the clock and Tipper answers as per usual. Anthony McDonald, Tipper Moody. There's, there's, there's no greater sight in the final term. So let's wrap this video up. Uh... It is over. Round 11 is complete. We've beat... Well, it was... You can't really say we beat 
um, the Gold Coast Suns. We snatched that win. We snatched that win from, from basically defeat. I don't know how we got it done. Tip us saved us. They got the five goal jump on us. They were really, really good. You can tell they're definitely improving. But the Hawks beat the Ds. Um, very, very tight game. Tigers are starting to get rolling here. As you can see, they beat the Swans. I, I, I can see them there at the end of the season. Um, the Bulldogs are still on their winning merry way. I think they're second at the minute over the Pies. Uh, Collingwood have just pumped. They West Coast the third, and they pumped West Coast. Wow. Over 50 points. St. Kilda lost to the power um, as we look at the ladder and we close out this video. So the Magpies and the Bulldogs, they're on clear top. We do hold fifth. We were eighth at the start of this round, so we hold fifth. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was a very, very tough game. Very, very enjoyable game. We got the job done. And we'll move on to the buy round next week and get ready for a big, big second half of the season. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one.